Okay, guys, we're starting with the second session. Uh, the second part of our tutorial is about the modulation strategies for dynamical systems, and this is specific uh, dynamical system. We have the initially learned dynamical system x dot is equal to f of x from demonstration that we have seen in the first part. What we want to do now, we want to change the behavior of the system, and for this, we introduce the modulation mat matrix m of x, which changes the initial dynamics. And this can be useful for, for example, local refinement. If you have learned a system, or you want to change specific parts of it. As we'll see later. If you have obstacles coming in, if you have interaction between humans and robots and factories, what do we do? If the human is an obstacle, how do we go around? How do we avoid it? And the third one is if you want to if you want to have interaction with the robot, if you want to have for example, polishing a surface, the robot needs to polish a surface. How do we exactly define these regions around the surface? Uh, how do we have decide the context of the non context So first of all, the local refinement. Again, with the general formulation, we have x dot is equal to t of x. And this is the, now the modulated, the modulation matrix times the initial dynamics. Well, we, how do we define our modulation matrix? So we, we split it into a scaling part. As you can see, it's 1 plus kappa of x. So this is scaling, and we have a rotation matrix. Here, this is described in 2D with rotation angle of t. And this allows us to have the initial system, and we can now rotate it with the rotation matrix and also stretch it. So using this, we can achieve from this in the initial dynamics, we can achieve any other dynamics. As we can see in 2D, we have two parameters. We have, the, we have two degrees of freedom, so we have two parameters. If you go to higher dimensions, we will have, um, expand the parameter vector by introducing new, uh, by adding more angles. And so what we do what do we do now? So we have the initially learned do we have the original data points XM? We learn some new data points and using this we can now uh, calculate our scaling angle. So the scaling is the initial dynamics divided by so the initial the, the, the magnitude of the initial system divided by the magnitude of the new data that data points that we add. And the phi is in fact the difference in the angle, so the difference in the orientation. And having this, we get now our new dynamics and our reshape, reshaping parameters defined mostly in, lo in local regions to allow us to reshape our initial. So again, we have, the reshape, we have now the reshaping parameters. We have the test input. And we do a regression on it to get a smooth, the, 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 the reshaping parameters to have them smooth all over space. Uh, but now again, we need to calculate the original dynamics. We have to construct the modulation. And using those two now, so the initial dynamics that we have learned in the first exercise to construct the modulation, we get the reshaped dynamics, which are then for the, sent to the robot to control it. Um, so what, yeah, so the dynamics, if it has the following properties, if you have a tractor, we have a limit cycle or multiple attractors in the original dynamics, it should stay also in the reshape. So we want to keep those dynamics. We want to keep attractors, we want to keep limit cycles. They can be changed slightly, but we want to keep them in the region. This it looks like, so we have the original training data, as you have created some before. We do the sets model on it, and we get now our dynamics. And what we can see now here might be that we, we're going up here, but we might want to stay down. And this might be a handwriting of a set, of a letter set that the robot should perform. 
and the angles are not. So in the edges are not good enough. How can we improve that now? Because you can see there it goes up. This is a bit all too round and wobbly. You want to improve it. And for this, we draw one reshaping line here to guide those all those trajectories to guide them down. And we guide and we we show it again to the robot that the dynamics should be a bit straighter up here and edges should be a bit better. And now we do we apply the reshaping algorithm. And as you can see, in red, we have marked the region where it's actually reshaped. That gives us an indication about the magnitude and the angle which is applied. And what we see now, if we go to the, yeah, the end is now coming down much better. So it's coming down further than before. And the edges here are again reshaped and improved. So if you compare again to the initial dynamics, we see we have a better performance of the system by applying this local modulation of the space for reshaping. The second approach. So now again, what is the task? We want to have obstacle avoidance. We want to modulate initial learned dynamics uh, system in a, such that the, the algorithm is closed form and computationally inexpensive. This allows us to have dynamic adaptation disturbances. So from the obstacle comes in in real time. You don't want to have any penetration or touching of the obstacles. This results in the normal velocity towards the obstacle always needs to be zero. And we want that the convergence region needs to be maintained. So we want to have the, the starting and the stop point that need to be maintained. As we can see, we have a robot acting here, grabbing something from the conveyor belt. It has a smooth path. It goes to the so so here the starting point. And if a human comes in, it needs to go around. But we want we don't want to stop the system. We want to continue going. This is an important part. So again, we have this initial dynamic system. Now it's a linear one. So we have this f of x at the point which we evaluate, and we're going to go to our interactor. We now apply our modulation matrix because our, uh, an obstacle is coming in. And our modulation matrix is divided into two parts, a matrix, an uh, eigenvector matrix E and, uh, and the eigenvector matrix E decomposes our initial dynamics into a normal and tangent part. So we apply <laughs> this. If we do have a normal, because we're in space, there's not really a normal. So we introduce uh, distance functions with complex addition. And we do now the we get the normal and the tangent with respect to this distance function, which can be evaluated anywhere and is a smooth function. So we get now the we have this, we evaluate the normal and the tangent, the normal in the in red and the tangent in green. And we have the second part of our modulation matrix, which is the eigenvalues. Diagonal matrix which applies. Now we have decomposed our initial vector with the eigenvector matrix. We stretch it now, or we can stretch it in either way. So how do we do that? What do we want actually? If we if we remember, we don't want to touch the obstacle at any point. So we want to compress in normal direction. It means that the first eigenvalue is always to be smaller or equal to one. We don't want to have stretching in tangent direction, so it should, as you can imagine, it should actually go around the opposite. So it has to speed up in tangent direction, it means that all the other eigenvalues need to be larger than one. Furthermore, constraints are if you're very close to the obstacle, we don't we want to have actually the maximum. We don't have we want to have zero velocity in normal direction and the maximum in tangent direction. On the other hand, if you're very far away, we would don't want to feel the obstacle at all. We want to Meaning that uh, we don't want to have any effect, all the eigenvalues should be zero. Look in nature, what we can find is that we have uh, that we have fluids which are flowing around stones and rivers. And if we apply those, if we copy those, if you look at those in a potential flow, potential flow in fluid dynamics, which are very which is a very old problem, we find some eigenvalue function which uh, correspond exactly to our conditions that we have, to our constraints. So again, if you can see, if you're on the obstacle, our gamma gamma function will be zero, and then in the normal direction, we will remove all the velocity. 
On the other hand, if we run the obstacle, the, all the gamma i will be 2, so we have the maximal, maximum guidance of the flow around it. And if you apply this now, we see we have this, the compression in normal direction, and we have stretching in tangent direction, and our initial flow, which was going towards the obstacle, is now going around. And if you apply this to the whole vector field, we see now the whole flow is guided around our obstacle, and it still goes to, to the attractor, even though we have the obstacle in the middle of it. So if you apply this to a dynamic system, to a moving obstacle, we can see that the robot is able to avoid this box, which is coming in, very smoothly, it's going around the boundary and it's handling in the end. So, this is a work and it's very pleasing. With the, as we have seen in the 2D dynamical system, it shows very good results. But if we have uh, specific shapes of obstacles, it's not able to treat yet. Because the problem is that we have a very large surface and it does not really know where to go right or left. So this is now a problem that we are tackling at the moment to guide the flow on large surfaces where it needs to go unnaturally around. How do you guys? At the previous algorithm, what we see if we replace this normal direction, which we have related normal to the surface, if we replace this, so if you can see, we have now the tangent is going down, we have the normal in this direction, tangent, we have the decomposition. If we apply now uh, compression in normal, stretching in tangent, we see we're going the wrong direction. Normally, naturally, we should go around the obstacle, but now we're going to a 
address of a local minimum in front of the obstacle. If we change, in fact, our normal direction, with the center line, which is not being normal to this surface out here anymore, but it's pointing to the center, what we see is that it changes also in the eigen, uh, eigen vector matrix. And what we see, before we had the normal in this direction, this direction, we had the tangent pointing down. Now we have the center line going to the center, and the tension is pointing up. If we apply now again, take com uh, compression in this new center or pseudo normal direction and stretching tangent direction, we see our vector is changed in the other direction. So the stretching here, the tangent will be longer, so we'll go in the other direction. And if we apply this to the whole space, we see now all the, the whole vector field is going around our more complex shapes. And uh, an important thing to notice, our eigen, so our matrix E is not orthogonal anymore, but it needs to have, needs to have full rank to, have, to apply this composition. And to have full rank, we need to have all tangent. tangents. They will be, they will have full rank anyway because they will be orthogonal to each other, but the center line C needs to be different from the tangent. So our center or our reference point, in fact, does needs to be somewhere inside the obstacle and not on the boundary or outside of the obstacle. And then it works. If you look now what obstacle shapes can our new algorithm actually tackle, what we see, we actually have already seen, we have concave obstacles where it goes around and with respect to our center point. In fact, we can change our reference point in the center to be anywhere inside the obstacle. And as you can see, if we change it to somewhere else, the flow will be split somewhere else, but it will still have full convergence to a tractor. Furthermore, we can have some star-shaped obstacles, because also as long as the center point is inside the largest convex region, so the largest convex region inside the star shapes, it can still converge. The problem now for this star shape is that the so there's no it's not continuously differentiable, so there's no normal or no tangent at the edges, so we need to have round edges. If we fly, fly those round edges, we can see the flow, flows going around and going to our attractor. Furthermore, this is very similar to if you have several intersecting obstacles, but also they, they need to have a common region where we can place our reference point. And if you apply the reference point in there, it can go around and towards the attractor, even though it's a relatively complex shape. A limitation of our algorithm so far is that we have multiple obstacles, but we don't have a common region. As you can see here, there's no common region between the three obstacles. And if you apply this, we will have the local minima on the obstacle where it will stop. The next thing is also how do we trade, how do we treat multiple obstacles? Again, we have initial system, initial linear dynamics, which is going to a tractor down here. We have the first obstacle with modulation to the right. We have the second obstacle where it's modulation to the left. And what we apply now, we do a weighted interpolation of magnitude and orientation separately. As you can see, we get the, the orientation. We take the so a weighted mean of the orientation, which is giving these two vectors in the middle. And now we take the mean of the magnitude. We will have final dynamics. And we also can apply this to the system and all vectors will go around the obstacles. Moving obstacles, so we will place ellipse, so we will place shapes on those moving obstacles. We will have a robot, so it's a simulated robot down here, which needs to go to a tractor on the right top right. How can I cope with it? We do it by partially moving in the frame of reference, only when it's, the obstacle is moving towards us, so that it's never going to penetrate again. So again, Placing the ellipses, which will be moving. We have the robot, which is going to start moving, and the shapes are going coming together. And they will touch. Well, the robot thinks he has to go to the right, but now he can't anymore. Just going to the left, around, and he's going to the track. So far to the obstacle avoidance and local modulation. 
Yes. At the point, uh, at the breaking point in the previous slide, like what what made the robot to come back? Because the robot won and he got stuck between the two obstacles. Um, uh, I can't show it anymore. But it's uh, so the two obstacles were coming together, mm -hmm. and as long as they're far away, this, the reference point of each obstacle rests in the center of the obstacle. Mm -hmm. And then once they have an intersecting region or they're coming closer, it's as they coming closer together, the reference point will uh, move towards this common region. And once they're intersecting, you will notice that there's no way to go anymore. And actually, the modulation is scattered in your other direction. Other questions? Good. So then we'll hand on. <laughs> So 